you're gonna ask me why are you not sleeping? Hi everyone. Hello. We have started just a little bit early. And this madam always likes to be on these things. I've just come back home from um I don't know if everybody can hear me okay. I have not other my other tablet is not on um, so I can't really um hear myself. But I'm gonna speak anyway because I know people can listen after. Isn't it, Mama? Yeah? Yeah. Yes. So, hi, everyone. Hello. Say hi, Mama. Hi. <laughs> Go on, give a little wave. Say hi. Say hello. Say hello, everyone. Hi. My name is Nina, Life Coach, and this is beautiful Ariel, Miracle. <laughs> She's going to assist me today because she can't go to sleep. Isn't it, Mama? Yeah. Yes. So, today I wanted to talk about the differences between parenting and being a parent. And this is just something that I have summed up. Uh, there's loads of differences, but I'm only going to touch down on two ones. Like one of each, on each category, because of what I sort of just saw tonight. So, for me... Are you going to let mommy talk? Mama. Would you let me talk, darling? Would you let me talk, Mama? Yeah? I mean, you can talk and add a bit of conversation, but I need you to be a little bit silent. Is that okay? Well, not silent, but just a little bit, tiny bit more. Is that okay? Okay. So, being a parent versus parenting. To me, being a parent mean you are the biological being or the adoptive person or an appropriate adult with legal rights to act as a parent okay and when you are just being a parent there are things that those things that are just you know the 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 category I've just put down, I put down an adoptive uh, person being, you know, a biological person and then an appropriate adult who is going to be somebody who has legal, you know, authorities to take care of the child that's under 18 at the time, you know, be like that appropriate adult for them. And all those three comes down as being parents. Now, there are things that you do when you're just being a parent. And some of them are like, you know, you know, it's just like, it's just being a parent. It's like, you're just being an adult who is in the home, you know. For instance, if there was issues with the parents in the house, anything, you know how social workers take the children away and put them into hostels or whatever it is, where they are appropriate adults to look after those children. So basically, that's just like parent, you know, being parents for those children, not parenting them, but just being like there, you know, just being there, kind of say. So, yeah, so that's what it is. It's like being the adult in the house where you can answer doors at night time, you can drop children to school, and you can clean and cook for the children. You know, these are all, you know, what a parent is to do. Because they're just like, they're, they're, they're that extra adults, the person who 
is supposed to guide and direct those who are vulnerable in the home. And children are vulnerable because a child like my own here, she don't know anything. So it's me who have to, you know, be the parent, but at the same time have a, a, a sense of responsibility of guiding them in a way that is okay. Okay. Now, that's just the one, you know, point I've given you, but there's plenty of points. But obviously, I'm not here to talk about my whole book. I'm not here to talk about my whole researches. I'm just here to touch down on some bases, just which is going to lead us to what it is that I want to talk about today. Okay. So, that's being parenting, what I've just said. Now, no, that's being parent, sorry, not parenting. Now, parenting children, to me, okay, there's different headings, subheadings, but I chose this particular one for a purpose, and you'll understand as I develop towards my talk. Okay. Parenting a child, to me, hmm? First and foremost is you communicating with your children and not at them. Two different things. Sorry about that, guys. I think something has happened. There was like an interaction. Somebody tried to, I think, something like that. And it's sort of like just come baby up a bit. And it's sort of like just sort of um you know stopped and froze. Now I was talking about parenting. I say parenting, you know, to a child to me, it's you communicating with the child and not communicating at the child. Parenting is communicating with the child or the young child, the toddler, whatever it is, but not at them. Because when I, what I mean by at them is some of our, some parents, sometimes, you know, <laughs> how can I put it? Communication, first of all, is a two-way thing, okay? For it to be effective, it needs to be a two-way thing, irrespective of the, the mental state of the other person, you know, it still has to be a two-way thing. The person that has more of understanding of what's being communicated is the person that has to ensure and make sure that the other person receiving what's being said, that they have a fuller understanding of what is being said, okay? So whether they're vulnerable, whether they're young, whether they don't understand, it doesn't matter. Communication still needs to be a two-way thing that's why you talk with children but you don't talk at children now what do i mean by talking with children and talking at children it's not a matter of just you know changing words or anything like that it's as simple as hi miracle how are you doing today uh, oh you're doing all right Are you doing okay? Okay. Oh, that's very nice. Are you happy being here? You're happy? You're happy. Do you want to play dodo? Do you want to sleep? Yeah. Sleep. Yeah? Okay. No problem. That's fine. So, what I've just introduced to you guys and what I've just showed you there is me talking. With miracle so I'm talking with miracle isn't it mama you are beautiful <laughs> I'm talking with miracle and how am I doing it is I am talking I am making sure that as I talk to her she's listening to me I am posing at the right time to let her express Give me a response to what I've said. That is a two-way communication. That's talking with the children. Yeah? Now, talking at children, it's like this. Miracle, I think you need to go to sleep, yeah? Because you're very tired and you look really tired. 
Okay, come on, let's go to sleep. Okay? Now you can see her expression, right? To the first way when I was doing it. When I was talking with her, she was smiling and everything. But when I'm talking at her, she's not moving, she's not smiling. So it's like as if nothing is going in. Two different ways. Now, when you are parenting a child, you need to talk with a child. It doesn't matter how young they are. It doesn't. But from a very young age, you need to make them feel important. You need to to let them know that they have a voice. Yeah. You need to let them know that they they, they, they have a choice to say no. You know, and tell you why they say no. And you, as a responsible parent or adoptive person or an appropriate adult you need to be in a place where you can say okay let the child exercise the authority a little bit you see that there or what i just in, you know um showed you guys it's that's how you teach them about authorities that's how you teach them about having the voices in two different ways now, when you're always tormenting them and talking at them, da, 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 how are you this? And I want you to do this. And you're going to have to do this because I think this is what it is. You are already making up the mind for that child. Now, the children that, that, that most parents or adults or whoever around them talks to them, you know, talks at them, these children are the very children who are. You know, if the authority tells them something, they will not listen. They will put up a guard. You know, they will be rude to authority. They are the one who's mischieving out there. They are the one who are breaking laws. They are the one who's breaking everything. Why? Because throughout their whole life, they have never been able to exercise their voices. They have never been given a chance to say what they want. In the morning, they will wake up and say, okay, that's it. You're going to eat beans today because beans is what we have and everything. And beans is what I've cooked. So there's no choice. I'm not going to waste food. I'm... No. Ask. What would you like to eat? There's a choice. Pick. You're showing them that, you know what? Life is about choices. That you have a choice to be good. You have a choice to be bad. But when I am always telling you what to do all the time, I'm telling you and teaching you there's only one way. And that one way is good or bad. There's no choice to it. If I tell you this is what's going to be, this is what's going to be. If you don't like it, that's it. But, but, no, no, but, 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 no. You're talking to, you're, that's talking at the children. But talking with them is like, yeah, but mom, you know, I don't really want to, okay. You don't want to do this, but do you know why I'm doing what I'm doing? Do you know why I'm punishing you? I am punishing you because this is what you've done. Is that not what you've done? Chances are they'll say, yes, I did. So why did you do it? Well, you are exercising them to think about the actions. You are preparing them for the real world. Now... <coughs> I've been on the call for the appropriate adults in my borough for a while and I've started it. Tonight wasn't just like my first, but yeah, I've started it before. So, but tonight was very special. A very, very special. Yeah. Let me just put the little one in. Thank you, baby. So tonight was a very special. I've got too many blankets in my in my bed because you know Miracle is a blanket baby. She likes comfort and stuff. That's just too many things. So today it was a very special one, and the special one obviously was to do with. Person, the young person in in, in custody. You know? I got called today, so I didn't expect it. Because every time, you know, I know that today is my call day. They can call you at any time. 
any time in the time frame that they've given me, you know, and thank God I don't, I don't, I did not put like a 24 hour time frame, so there's always a good five hour time frame for looking for, you know, in that five hours, you know, no matter where you are, you just have to, you just have to accept the call and go. I almost said no. Almost said no. Because at the time that it came in, because I was just about to lie down. And I thought, okay, they've not called. But the call came. And I accepted. And I accepted and I left. Obviously, I do my routine prayers. Whenever I go to these places, I always have to make sure that I pray. I pray on the way. I speak to the Holy Spirit and I tell God, you know what, God, you brought me into this job because you want to use me to change the young ones that I see out there. And I got there. It's like, this is the far, the far best. This is the far best one I've had so far. Because it's the one that I felt like a real appropriate adult. Yeah. It's the one where I've really, really understood. Even though I've done training, I've done everything. But this is the one where I saw the need that this country needs. I saw the need. I saw a need tonight. And the need is in those two things that I've just put up there. Parenting and being a parent. Because so many of us are just being parents. But they're not parenting children. the look on this child's face the excitement the, 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 the oh my god thank you so much for being here pierced my heart so hard that I was crying on the inside but on the outside tears were not coming out Because I just looked at him. All I saw was my child. You know, I always say that every child is my child. All I saw was my child. This is my child. By just looking at him and how he approached me, how he spoke to me, I'm thinking, this child isn't supposed to be in here. Why is he here? So I got the call sheet that they give you. Then I got it and I started reading. Then I read. Then I turned the page when I tell you what it is. Uh, what it is that they did. It was just a simple thing. Well, they put it down as whatever it was, which I'm not going to discuss what it was. But I felt like I was his mother and he was my child and I've been called to say that your child is in custody and I went and I sat down and I prayed for a little while I said Lord I don't want to open my mouth and you have let me open my mouth so that you will be glorified and then he asked can I please talk to me obviously for a bit. So we went in the room and we had to talk and we had a really nice chat. And he was asking me questions, obviously. Um no matter what I know, legally I cannot, you know. Legally I cannot um answer them those things because they can get solicitor, so I did but you know, they can get solicitor and stuff like that. So I'm not there really to 
to, 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 to give them legal advice. I'm more there to just make sure that they're being treated fair, you know, and everything, that everything is going okay. That if they don't understand anything they tell me, then I'll talk to the, to the police and stuff. So basically, I'm just there as a parent, really, for the young, the juvenile, really. So, yeah, he told me in there, and, and he's a lovely little child. And I said, I said, well, why? You know, I said, I said, why are you here? He goes, oh, I was just frustrated. I was just, and you know, even the way he was responding and everything. And I looked at the child and I'm like, the child is lacking. What's the word? Parenting. Then he went on and on. He wasn't by himself where he went. But what happened? He had an adult. And this adult was being a parent to this young person. But when the whole thing blew off and the young person got arrested, the adult switched off the phone, disappeared, nowhere to be found. It wouldn't even pick up anything. But thanks be to God, there are people like us, yeah, who will respond to the call and go save somebody's child. If I was not available, no one else was available, that young chap would have slept in the cell tonight for something he didn't deliberately do, but there was something else in him that caused him to react the way he did, which I, the life coach in me, brought out. To him, so I remember when I was taking up this post and I was going through the interview, and they told me what did I want to be an AA, and I told them, oh, well, with all the experiences I've had through my life, and the fact that I also have experience of having children from all ends of spectrum, beginnings and all over the place. You know, I've got teenagers who you know, almost toddlers, you know, so yeah, since because of that, that I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to come on and add something that I have to add my experience into the system, where we mean system, we mean the whole of policing system, custody system, criminal justice system, and all those things. I've always seen myself as somebody who would add a one plus to the system, not necessarily, you know, changing the system because I don't believe in changing something which has already been there, but I do believe in, you know, reconstructing things and theories and stuff in something which has already been there so we can build from something that's already in place, you know, but we cannot wipe out as a whole to change. So the best way to do is bring in your ideas and work together to make sure that this idea is suitable but always be open-minded so i told them that i was coming in to add the experiences that i have i was coming in to add you know what i know you know the insight that i have and i'm happy and i think today i showed that today i was parenting that boy in that place and you know it was amazing and I just told him straight up in front of you know the police and everything and I said I don't want to see you here you here because you were frustrated because you were tired because you traveled a long way to go where you were going and then you did not get the full information and I don't blame you because you're only a young child who is being forced to do things that adults should be doing. So he is, I would say, what he was doing, it's something that an adult should have been doing, not him. And that's why he would get frustrated because he's not yet mature to do that which he was doing because his mind, his thinking is into childishness. 
He's not into the reasoning part. The reasoning part is for the parent. Now, if you're just there being a parent and not parenting, you're not helping. Now, I have my children in my home. You know, I am their parent, but I also do the parenting. The parenting part that I do has nothing to do with what the parent does. A parent, as a parent, I have to provide food. I have to clean and clothe and all those things you name. But as the parenting is, I need to check the homework. I need to answer to all the, what the teachers are saying. If they have to go somewhere, they have to do something, they know, well, I need to call the GP. They don't need to call the GP. Because I know all the right questions to ask. I know all the information to give the GP. They don't at the moment because they're just children. So many youth workers are just being youth workers. Many are doing it for money, many aren't. And even those who aren't doing it for money, it's just more like, yeah, so that I can say I'm an appropriate adult, innit? Yeah, so that I can say I'm a youth worker, innit? It just looked good on my CV, innit? Well, that's all well, all proper and good. I'm happy that it looks good on your CV. And I'm happy that, yeah, it's something that you want to boast about. But my question is, are you impacting those young people that you are dealing with on a daily basis are you seeing those young children as your own children every child is your child do you know that every opportunity every second every minute we get to meet any youth be it on the bus be it on the street no matter what it is it's an opportunity for us to parent them but how many of you will just walk away how many of you will just say, but you know what, I did try it in No, because you're talking at them. You're not talking with them. You want them to listen to you, but you're not listening to them. You know, I sat there. I observed this young boy today, tonight. At the age that he's at, I saw he had this big book he was reading since he's coming here. The moment I saw that, more tears on the inside I was crying. I'm like, this, this, this black boy can read. Then why is he here? He can read, yo. So we started talking. He has brain. Then I told him, I said, son, this is not for you. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, no, this is not for you. Don't just hear what I'm saying. Talk to me. This is not for you. Go back to college. If you need help, go and seek help. But don't do this again. Respect authorities. But above all, find a church and start going to church. Do you know... It's quite funny. He turn around and say, yeah, my father is a pastor. <laughs> then I said, okay, <clears throat> it will have to make sense. That's why I'm here. So I guess I'm the person. So I started painting images like I do to my children of how life is. Then I mentioned about how I'm an author. I'm a life coach. I have a 16-year-old daughter who's about to publish her first book. Then he said, oh, I would love to publish a book too. Then he slowly started to open up. He slowly started telling me about his life and things. And I saw opportunity in that boy like I've never seen before. All he needed was somebody to listen and parent him and guide him. And sincerely tell him off but in love. Because it was like, oh yeah, but you know, those people were like it. I said, no, they're not. And she, he looks at me like, I said, listen, they're not. 
You just need to learn to be patient with people. I said, just imagine this. You were in their shoes. And you've gone through all this amount of 50 people like you. And then you're coming there and this is what they're telling you. And I said, this is all down to the fact that you didn't know one piece of information. That's all it is. Communication is the key. And when I said that, all I saw was the other police person say, yeah, you know, we just have to communicate. Yes. I said, all these people are human just like you and I is. We breathe. It's just about communication. Everybody has bad days. You don't know where a person is having a bad day, but you just come and just assume their life must be jolly like yours. No. This is why we start by, hi, excuse me, please, may I? You can't just come up and say, oh, yeah, 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 what's the time, what's the time? No, you don't do that. You don't do that. And that's not how it is. You know, and the most beautiful part of it is as I was speaking, as calmly as I am speaking to you right now to him, he was listening. He was listening. And I have hope for him. I know. He will do well. But it's such a shame. Because as I was going, he goes to me. I'm so happy that you can because as you can see. My did you really do have a person I thought that was there doesn't care. I said something he just doesn't care. I was first living with my did you really do before, you know, the did you did you do? And I was like, wow. And I understood everything. So, dear friend. Dear mothers, dear parents, fathers, I'm going to say something because it's something that happened today that that kid just pushed me to just, it's like a confirmation, but I'm going to say this to you guys. You know who you are. You are listening to me. I don't know you. From A to Z. But if you do have. If you do have. A child. From the age of 10. To 17. Who has been arrested so many times. Mm. it's just out of place at the moment inbox me at voice to women let's chat I have strategies and ways that I will teach you and show you to communicate with that child that will change their life forever because you see it is not so much in the details of what we are telling these children. It is so much in the how we are communicating to them. Yeah? I know the hours that I spent in the custody with this young... You know, not even young, with this future leader changes life. Is the accountant. Let us start going out there. Helping. It's not enough to just sit there, do meetings, do marches, you know, conferences upon conferences, meeting politician upon meeting politician, just because you want to talk about the, the knife gang and the gun, whatever. What? Yeah, it's great. We know it's there. We want to talk about it. That's fine. But then there's other avenues, like what I'm doing, volunteering in your local police station to just go local prison go speak let them know of another way of thinking there's another principle of doing things there's another way of reasoning apart from what they are 
And there's a lot of you like myself who have got so much experience in life and testimony that these people need to hear. And the most amazing thing is God just told me, so just do that thing I told you to do. It's just a God, God told me to do something. And I'm just going to do it. Because there is power in the voice of a woman. Because we are the one who birth male. We are the one who bring into this world the children that we see today. You don't need to give birth to them biologically to give them an advice or to love them like your own. You just need to be conscious of the fact that you are more than just a body. You are a voice to be heard. Every fetus in the womb of the mother recognizes the voice. And if you've had children, then you should be passionate about children. If you've had children, then you should understand that every human being walking in this world responds to only one voice. And that's the voice of a mother. And a mother is a woman, so therefore a voice of a woman. But you need to understand what kind of voice it is. Just remember when you were pregnant, how do you communicate to your your stomach as you're rubbing it saying you know that feeling that you feel is the same feeling that you should feel when you approach this individual talk to them in that manner from the inside out they will listen to you because a woman is always a mother even if they have not given birth to a child they still are mothers because there is something in your voice that is eternal there is something in your voice that will never change. And that, once you understand it like I have, and you've mastered it like I have, you will be healing a lot of people. You will be healing a lot of broken people. You will be, you know, bringing back children who are lost like the one I had today. You will bring sense into their head. And automatically you paint a picture and then they see who they are all of a sudden. Why? Because when we are pregnant, we paint pictures in our minds of how our baby is going to be. Because the sky alone doesn't tell us how the baby looks like, does it? So just be that. Look at those children like a pregnancy. Paint the picture in the image and then communicate it to them effectively. Let them see what you see in them. Should they be your children? How would you see them? That's all I wanted to say for today. So, let us go out there and parent, be, you know, do the parenting things to, uh, to everyone's children. But do it in love. Don't judge. Because... Growing up as a child today and growing up as a child back in my days are two different ways. Children are more pressured now than we were back then. Back then we never had smartphones, we never had social media, we never had half of the destruction that the children have today. Back then we had parks. And then we had cartoon that ended like at 5.30 before the 6 o'clock news came in. Gosh, that's what we had. You know, and life was so simple being a child back in those days because it was just, it was just a little bit easier than it is today. You know, cyberbullying wasn't there and so many things. So we need to also educate ourselves as older generation about the new generation. It's important. You know, so we can't just walk into, yeah, I want to be a youth worker, yeah, I want to be an appropriate adult, yeah, I want to be a... just so it looks good on my CV. No, want to be it because you want to help. And for you to be able to help these young ones is you need to lower yourself, unfortunately, to where they are and you need to understand where they are and if you can't understand where they are then unfortunately you cannot help them 
and sometimes for you to understand where they are is you may need to refer them to people like a psychotherapist you may need to refer them to maybe other coaches male coaches you know coaches like the guy the the, the the youth that i have today me personally i will not coach them because i stood in for him as a mother so if i already stand in for a person as a mother i cannot coach them because i'm already attached to them and sometimes as a coach you need to be detached because if you're not detached as a woman your feelings will now start to guide you okay because women i are moved by emotion mothers especially so you need to be detached <sighs> so that's all i can say for today so as you all replay back and listen to what i've said think about it from this day forward even in your, your children's school you see any child or anything do the parenting thing with love with love until we meet again always remember there is something about a woman and unless you meditate you take time in to know who you are you will never understand how great you are woman you are more than a body you are a voice to be heard. Good night and God bless you.